Chapter 33, The Ninja Again I expected to be called to the castle the next day, but no messenger came. The old Lord Akiyama, who did not usually care much for company, had me in attendance most of the time. He was known as a very fine archer who, when younger, had won all the competitions among the samurai of Kai. Now he took charge of me to teach me. I was honored by his attention, although I realized it was partly because he could talk to me about his son. Lord Akiyama had obviously been the favorite among his children, and he was very proud of him. I told him about our hunting expeditions the previous summer, and naturally about our first meeting and how his son had taken charge of me. One day we rode to the townland of Haruchika, where the small castle and a shrine belonging to Lord Akiyama. It was pleasant to be with the old man, but as the days went by without hearing anything from the castle, we both grew worried. The old samurai attempted to see Takeda Katsuyori, but was told that Takeda, Lord Takeda was occupied and had no time to spare. He returned to his own house in a furious temper, for he was a man who cared passionately about his dignity, and the young samurai had dismissed him as if he were some itinerant priest who had come begging. The sickle moon had grown full and started to wane again, and yet we had heard nothing. When I finally learned of Lord Katsuyori's decision, it was not from him. I had been wandering around the town when I spied a person whom I thought I knew going into a sake shop. The area around the market is not the best. It is said to be dangerous once the sun is set. But since this was early in the afternoon and the hour of the ram was not yet over, I followed the man. When I entered the sake shop, he had already seated himself and was being served by a young girl. I looked at him sharply. I knew that I had seen him before, but I could not recall where. I guessed he was a poor bougie or not a samurai of great importance. Suddenly I remembered, he was the ninja I met that night at, in front of Iwamura Castle. Obviously, he too was wondering who I was. Suddenly he smiled and motioned me to sit down. We have met before, but I cannot remember where, he said. You were dressed differ differently then, I replied, seating myself and ordering the girl to bring me some warm sake. It was below Iwamura Castle. You had just returned from it. I was with Watakansuke and another friend. How strange, the ninja, just lift, uh, the ninja lifted his sake cup in a silent toast. I have just come from there again. I felt my heart beat faster as I asked, although it were, as though it were no great concern of mine, why were you there? I brought a message to its governor from Lord Takeda. There are as many Oda soldiers surrounding it as there are ants in an anthill. The ninja filled his sake cup up once more. Will they be able to hold out much longer? I asked, trying to sound as if I did not care what happened. He was told to try to come to some agreement with Oda Nobunaga, the castle for their lives. The ninja had emptied his little pitcher of sake and I ordered another. Lord Takeda is willing to give up the castle, which they cannot hold for long anyway, if he can save the soldiers, for he is in greater need of them. Is Oda Nobunaga there? I thought it was his son, Nobutado, who was in command. To my disgust, I realized that my hand betrayed me. As I lifted my sake cup, it trembled. Lord Nobunaga is there. He came only a few days ago. I saw his banner flying when, where they have their headquarters. The ninja smiled a little. You are very interested in Iwamura Castle. I have friends there. I poured some sake into my own cup. Will Nobunaga grant them safe conduct to leave? The ninja shook his head. I would not care to bargain with Oda Nobunaga. His stall in the marketplace is not one a ninja would go near. I suddenly recalled that Oda Nobunaga hated the ninjas and hated, had them killed wherever he caught one. Lord, Akiyama is, Lord Akiyama's wife is Oda's aunt, I commented. She married your master without her nephew's permission. I doubt he will forgive her for that. The ninja emptied his sake cup and rose. You are the messenger who came here from Iwamura, he stated, rather than asked, and I nodded. The ninja smiled, patted the hilts of his swords, and left. Only after the door closed behind him did I realize that he had left all the payment for the sake he had drunk to me. I ran as quickly as I could to Lord Akiyama's mansion. Once there, I searched for his father and found him practicing archery in the garden. When I told him what had happened, he handed his bow to a servant and motioned me to come inside. Why did Katsuyori send the ninja and not you? The old samurai frowned and then answered his own question. Because he did not trust you. Yes, that must have been the reason. I think the ninja knew from the very start he was talking to Lord Akiyama's messenger. What he told me may not be the truth, I suggested. You might have told my son way too much of what you've seen here. 
I shall leave for Iwamura right away, I declared. I fear that Lord Katsuyori may forbid me to return. You are loyal to my son. Go saddle my best horse and be ready. I shall write a letter for you to take. As I saddled the horse, I wondered if, had Aki not been in Iwamura Castle, I would have been so eager to return. As I led the horse from the stable, I feared all the time that a messenger would come from Tsuchigasaki Castle ordering me to go there. I debated with myself if I should dare disobey such an order, but happily no messenger came. Here, Ordaki Yamanobutora handed me a letter, and I put it away in the same pouch that it contained his son's letter to, to Takeda Katsuyori on my way to Kofuchu. Tell him. The old samurai looked around and then bit his lip and said no more. He handed me a leather purse while he mumbled for the journey. I spurred my horse, for I saw that a tear had formed in the old man's eye and was running down his furrowed cheek. Again, I rode as if I wished to kill my horse, and once more it proved as sturdy an animal as ever I had sat astride. I did not rest until I was once more inside Ida Castle. There I left my mount, the poor beast trembling like an aspen leaf. I did not think it could have carried me much further. The governor of the castle made me stay the night, and the next morning I set out again, planning to head for the charcoal burner's cottage and there to change my clothes and leave my horse. The beast I was given to eat of was a mare that saw no reason for haste. By the time I reached the path leading to the cottage, darkness had fallen and I had almost missed my way. The house seemed very dark, and I called out a greeting. Soon a light appeared, and one of the daughters came and took my horse. The charcoal burner had only one small oil lamp which shed a poor light, so I could not see the expression on his face as I said I was on my way to Iwamura. Iwamura, he repeated, and indicated for me to sit down beside the brazier and warm myself. Have you not heard? I have heard nothing from the castle since I left. I held my hands over the warm coals. Iwamura Castle has fallen. The banner of Oda Nobunaga now flies from its battlements. The girl who had taken my horse entered silently and kneeled near me. And did Lord Oda give my master freedom to leave? My voice shook, for I knew what the answer would be. Yes. The charcoal burner looked into my face as if he wanted to judge exactly how I would take the news. Lord Oda made them leave on the road to the west. He killed them all, even though he promised them their lives. Everyone? I clenched my hands so hard that I could feel the nails bite into my palm. Even the women and children... He had Lord Akiyama and three others crucified as if they were common criminals. And what happened to his aunt, Lady Akiyama, and the women who served her? Dead. They say that Oda himself cut off her head. The swords of his samurai grew blunt from overwork. Down by his headquarters, they pile up heads like vegetables ready for the market. May I borrow some clothing from your sons? The meanest kind. I will go to Iwamura. I will lend you whatever you want. I will give you a bag of charcoal to carry on your back. It will serve as the best disguise. But I would rather you stay here. I told you that in, in, in Iwamura they are all dead. Remain with us. The old charcoal burner gave a nod in the direction of his daughter. If you stay here, you will need nothing. She will make as good a wife as anyone you will find in Kofuchu. I must go to Iwamura, I repeated, although at that moment I felt so tired I could hardly move. When? The old man stirred the coals in the brazier. Very soon. I need only rest a while. Stay. The old charcoal burner held up his hand to stop my protest. Your master is dead and cannot any longer demand from you that you should follow him. The young rushed to the road to the west as if they were being sure as if they were sure of being reborn as princes. You are not a child any longer. Stay here. I smiled bitterly. He was right. I was not a child any more. My youth was over. I thanked the old man for a minute kindly, and I told him that I would be back. I did not tell him that I could not live there in the dark forest. I smiled at the girl, and she smiled back. In the mirror of her eyes, I saw my own image reflected, a young samurai, and I wondered if it had been her, if it had been she who had asked her father for me to stay.